All right, so in the previous examples, we looked at how to construct proxies by specifically making new classes. Now, what I'm going to show you is a much more powerful but somewhat computationally costly approach, and that is the approach of dynamic proxies. Now, this is important. Dynamic proxies are used in many places. They're used in many frameworks, and you should be aware of what dynamic proxies are and how to use them. So the simple answer to what is a dynamic proxy is it's a proxy which is constructed at runtime as opposed to compile time. So at runtime, you take an existing object and you make a wrapper around it, for example, in order to intercept every single call to every single one of its methods. So the best way to understand what a dynamic proxy is is to actually build one and see how it works. So let me set up a very simple scenario. So first of all, I'll make an interface called human. And let's suppose that our human is going to be able to do two things. The human can walk and they can also talk. All right, so having made this interface, we can now make a class. Let's call the class person, which is going to implement this interface human. And here I will simply generate the implementations and we're gonna fill them in with fairly simple stuff. So here I'm just going to uh, system out uh, print line, something like I am walking and the same goes for I am talking right here. Okay, so we now have a class called person as well as an interface called human and we're gonna try and build a dynamic proxy which takes an existing object of type person and counts the number of methods inside person that have actually been called. So we need to build a dynamic proxy object and luckily for us, Java gives us an interface for doing exactly that. So we're gonna build some sort of logging handler and we're going to implement an interface which Java gives us called invocation handler. So we're gonna say implements invocation handler and this is something from Java Lang Reflect. So it's a reflection interface and it's precisely the interface which allows us to intercept different methods. Now the way this is done is using the invoke method right here and we'll get to it in just a moment. But first of all, I want to initialize the logging handler and show you what kind of information we're gonna track inside it. So we're gonna have two things. The first thing that we're gonna have is a reference to the object which we are actually providing a proxy for. Remember, this is all happening at runtime. So at runtime, you have to give it an existing object and tell it to basically take over its functionality while providing additional things. So private final object target. That's what we're going to build a proxy for. And the second thing that I want is I want a map which is going to record the number of method calls to the various methods that are called on the underlying object. So here I'll have a private map and this map is going to go all the way from a, a string to an integer. So it's going to map the names of different methods to how many times they've been called. So I'm gonna call this calls going to be a new hash map like so. Now we're going to have to initialize the target in the constructor. So I'm going to define the constructor like this, simply taking the target and saving it. And now we're finally ready to implement the invoke method. So the invoke method is basically uh, the idea that you get to invoke a particular method, which is this method, with this particular set of arguments. So not a particularly scary concept, but before we actually perform the invocation, we might want to do some additional work, like for example, noting down the number of times that each method has been called. So let's get the method name. So here we have the reflection object for a method, and I can say method.getName, make a variable out of it, and then what I can do is I can increment the number of calls that have been made to this name inside our calls map. So I can say, uh, calls.merge, I can specify the key of name, and here I will either initialize the value one, or I will add it to the existing value using integer sum. So fairly simple stuff. And then of course, towards the end, we actually do use the reflection APIs to perform the invocation of the method. So we return method.invoke, it gets to invoke on the target, and the set of arguments is args, which is provided as another argument into this method. Okay, so this is great. Now I'm going to do another trick here. Let's suppose that somebody calls to string on the decorated object. Let's suppose that that is precisely the point where I want to output the number of calls that have been made to the different methods. So if the name of the method contains uh, the word to string, 
then what I'm going to do is instead of returning a default implementation, like calling the underlying object, I'm going to take my calls map, I'm going to turn it to a string and return that instead. We'll take a look at how it works in just a moment. So let's go into our demo class and we can actually start using all of this to build a dynamic proxy for a person. Now we're going to have a utility method here for constructing a dynamic proxy with logging on any kind of object. It doesn't have to be a person, it can be virtually anything. So it's going to be a static method. Uh, it's going to be parameterized on a type T and it's going to return that type T by the way. So I'm going to call it with logging. So we're going to take two things. We're going to take the target, which is the object for which the logging is required. And we're going to specify as a class of T, the interface that we want to receive on the output. Because remember, we actually want to get a particular interface and a dynamic proxy for that interface. So you cannot simply just take the underlying class and get that as the end result because that wouldn't work, but you can get an interface. So you'll get a dynamic proxy which conforms precisely to ITF, which should hopefully explain why in this demo I have a class and I also have this class implementing an interface because it is precisely this interface that we're going to uh, give out at the end of the with logging invocation. Okay, so here we use the Java APIs. We say proxy dot new proxy instance, and we make a proxy. Now this uh, method call, it takes three arguments. The first is the class loader for whatever interface you want. So itf dot uh, get class loader. Uh, the second argument is just a list of all the interfaces that you're interested in. So here we'll just make a, a new array of class objects and there's only really one here, but you can expand this example to have more than one interface being wrapped. And then of course the final argument is the actual type that we're using for the dynamic proxy, which in our case is called a logging handler. And remember it takes the target as the first and only argument. So we are almost done. We have to remember to cast the result of proxy new instance to the type T that we're returning and also seeing how we have an unchecked cast here and your ID may or may not complain about this. I'm going to suppress a warning here so I'm going to go into suppress warnings and suppress the unchecked cast warning like so. Okay so now that we are done with this entire setup what we can do is we can start using it. So coming down here first of all let's make a person so here is just an ordinary person and then I'm going to construct a dynamic proxy with logging. So I'm going to say with logging, I'll provide the person as the argument and the second argument is that interface that I want to receive. Now remember person implements the human interface. So here I can say human.class and that specifies the actual interface and let's make a variable called logged for example. Now let's just check that it actually works. So what I'm going to do is I'll take logged which remember it implements the human interface, I will call the talk method once and maybe I will call the walk method twice like so. And then we can try out this two string thing that we've implemented right here. So this chunk of code basically checks that if somebody is calling two string on the proxy, you return the number of calls. So that map that we've constructed up above, we actually return the contents of this map turned into a string. So let's try doing exactly that. Now this will be done automatically when you do system.out.print line, because remember, if you just pass in an object, it's going to call two string on it. So here I just pass logged and we are done. This is our demo essentially. So let's actually run this and let's see that we get the right output here. And as you can see, we are getting the correct output. So we're calling, I am talking, I am walking, I am walking, and then we're getting the summary. And the summary shows us that the talk method has been called once and the walk method has been called twice. So this is a very small illustration of the kind of power that is afforded to us by dynamic proxy. So here, all that's happened is essentially just by implementing a single interface for an invocation handler, you have a point where you intercept the invocation of every single method. And when that method gets invoked before it actually gets invoked right here, you can perform some additional processing, which is pretty much what proxies are actually all about.